Hey everybody, Jason Shadrick here with PremierGuitar.com, and we are with Jimmy Herring in Manifold Studios in Pittsburgh during your uh, kind of two-day master class session. That sounds it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to do a track breakdown here where you're going to walk us through one of the tunes off your latest record, Curfew, which is kind of a country Merle Travis chicken picking type yeah. thing. Yeah. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about how this song came about and walk us through the different sections. Okay, well, the short, story, the short version is one of my favorite people, we named him Curfew because he's so young and he hangs around with us. We call him <laughs> Curfew. Bruce named him Curfew because he's too young to be with us. So this is for him. And uh, he got a, I had to, his, this tune was in my head, you know, just this progression and he got a speeding ticket and then I started making up words to the tune and singing <laughs> it to him, teasing him about his ticket and the tune came about that way. Of course, we don't use the words. <laughs> But uh, we just did it with the music. Anyway, it's just based out of a, an, an E triad, you know, moving to a, up a whole step to F sharp seven, and then down to D nine, right? And then back to E. And really where that came from was this right here. I, what I'd done is I'd been messing with this. Everyone knows that little blues turnaround. Basically, it's E7, and then when you drop the, this shape down to here, that's a, uh, if you put a, uh, if you put an F sharp in the bass, that becomes like an F sharp 7, kind of, it's got, it's got some altered notes in it, like a flat 9 or whatever, but I just changed it to straight up F sharp 7, so that's where the progression came from. And then that chord right there is a D9, and that's where this D9 down here came from. And, and then I just applied it to a, a Travis picking thing, you know. And tell me a little bit about what you're doing with your right hand on those. I'm, what kind of pattern you're using? I'm, I'm holding the pick out of the way here and using the these three fingers to. Uh, I'm going like. Uh, and then hitting the sixth interval. The, the thumb is going. I wish I could have found a jug player to play this with me. You know, especially in the next section, which we'll get to. But uh, and the other, the, the other thing is just going. To, you know, I hit the, the finger of this chord right here, and then hit that sixth interval with the thumb and the, th and the third finger, and then go. I want to see what happens. Okay, you, you hit the, the thumb, and then and then the bass note alternates down to mm -hmm. B. And of course, you could do the the yeah. Staccato. Right? And then move to the next chord, which is an F sharp seven, and do the same thing. Right, and then move to the D nine. Same thing, and then back to the one. And uh, you do the little walk up to it, which is. noises you're hearing are, are notes that are muted, like I'm trying to figure out which one is, is muted. There's just a percussive noise in there. Almost like a chicken picking type Yeah, thing. I guess so. Mm -hmm. You know, like a... Isolated. But. The first two times, that's the 
progression. And then the third time, it moves to this progression. the end of that intro of the section. intro okay then it's going to go to uh to this little i call it the charlie christian section because it reminds me of him but it's just basically a7 <clears throat> and then going to a b flat diminished where you keep the, the shape the shape is you know just moving the bass notes see you know I, I don't always play it with the thumb but i'll go like this come in yet. That's okay. where the head comes in is right after that. Okay. This is the build up to the head. It'll go. Charlie Christian. progression comes back in. And yep. that's where the head comes in and it goes. Should I go through that? You yeah, a little bit. It? Yeah, tell All us right, about the idea that. behind that is on the E chord. I'm, I'm basically thinking, you know, E m major, major pentatonic. Uh, you know, the idea is like I, I hit the, the third of the chord and then go to a minor third, come back, you know, like that, and then come down and go the root. I 
just use this much anyway. Yeah. One part that doesn't make sense, and this shouldn't work, but on this D9 chord I'm hitting, I'm going C sharp should not work against that chord yeah. because it's got a C in it. This has baffled me ever since this tune came around because normally if you were going to play the note that really fit this chord, it wouldn't be a C sharp, it would be C, C natural, but that would sound like... That does not sound right, right? So I thought, okay, well I'll change the chord to make it fit with the C sharp. But then it would have been, it would have been, you know. It doesn't sound right either. Yeah. I don't know why it works, but to me, you know, we laughed about it. It, it, it worked to play the wrong note against that chord. But that's what we ended up with was, yeah. For some reason it didn't matter. But when I'm soloing over it, I, I, I don't do that. Right. You know, I, play, I play the note that fits the chord. And then it's going to go, the progression is going to go down to the bridge. Not the bridge, but the thing that leads you to the bridge, you know. Might as well do the, the, the rhythm part first. And Sweet Georgia Brown. Mm -hmm. You can have that chromatic bass note going from the, from the A like, to the B flat. Yeah. Yeah. Circle of force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two, five, one, right there. Just like a two, five, one. Right there, right there, like. You know, you can do it slow too. down yep. part, mm -hmm. there's a there's a comical, you know, chicken picking thing. I'm missing it, hang on. Okay, that's basically going against. I wish I could do that, but I can't. Um, so I just do it with a with a pick. Mm -hmm. Cheap pedal steel parlor trick. But you know that there's a percussive thing happening the whole time. Pick is continuing to keep going even when there aren't notes happening. Mm -hmm. And the, and the muted thing gives it that thing. You right. Know? And that's where the C sharp part comes in. Right. You know? C sharp minor, I should say. And, uh, 
there's lines over that stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, I guess if I were to, it, it's not, it's a, I don't know that they're actual melodies. In the solo, I, I, I found a way of playing through that, like. <laughs> on the C sharp minor, I'm thinking, you know, you know, uh, to me it's like a, a, a the minor pentatonic scale with, with the ninth added to it. Okay. You know, so it gives you this kind of sound, like, and also you can put chromatic notes around the fifth, you know, like, like, you know, or like, which is based off the, the A right here. And the formula would be like one, two, three, five, and flat seven. You know, and it fits that chord right there. You know, so it's going between these two chords. So I'm going like a... something along these lines because you, you see that it's this fits when it goes to the A and then the F sharp that little chromatic thing there right. you know you know and then the turnaround I just played, you know, some some blues lick, you know, <laughs> something along those lines, you know, which base is based out of the uh, E major pentatonic with some excessive chromatic notes <laughs> thrown in. Our necessary you know. chromatic. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to fill out the bar. So after the solo section, where does the tune go from there? Uh, oh well, well we didn't talk. We were just talking about the minor part. It goes to Bayless part, but Bayless Bayless solos over a different set of changes. Oh, I see. And but they're standard, real standard. They're going like the one to the to the six, and then two, five, one, right out of the textbook. Mm -hmm. One six two five. The only thing that makes it the least bit they they don't stay in one key, so they're all going to be major chords. Or actually, the one chord is a major chord. All the other chords are dominant. You know, so it's going to go six, two, five, one. Same progression from earlier to two. Yeah, I did there. 
that is kind of like uh, you know your <clears throat> your E major pentatonic on the E. And you, you know you, you've, you've got your chromatic approaches. With, the yep. thing we were talking about earlier with these guys was playing minor pentatonic scales and resolving the thirds to major. Mm -hmm. So you have this kind of a sound. You know, instead of just going, we're gonna every time we hit a G in this key, you know, the major, the minor third, we're gonna resolve it to a major third. And that works great over these kind of countryish yeah. kind of progressions. So that's what I'm kind of approaching on that chord. When it moves to the F sharp, I'm thinking F. It's F sharp seven, so I'm thinking that dominant pentatonic again. sharp mixolydian you know right. like you know and I'll, I'll throw in chromatic ideas with that you know you know to me that's just that sharp mixolydian when it goes to the D9 chord I'm imagining the sharp 11 there of course yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so that's going to lead you to a melodic minor scale fifth from this chord, you know, and then you resolve it back to the one, so it's going the one to the two dominant, and then to this, this D9, where you, where you play melodic minor, so you get these, these lines that weave from... That that's what I'm trying for. And then that goes to the, uh, you know, where, where uh, this time um, I decided to try to approach each chord tone from a half step below. Mm -hmm. And you get this. You know, it, I'm just playing an arpeggio. But I'm approaching each, each chord tone from a, a half step below. Like, uh, and I'll go through the whole progression doing that. Like, you know, so that's what that is. Yeah, you can hear. Yep. You know. Very the rest Billy of, jazz. Yeah. Type stuff. Yeah. Yep. Then the rest of it is just chromatic you know, approaches throughout those chords, you know. That whole line is something like this. And that goes to the C sharp minor, minor part section. that we were talking about before. Right. With the, we already talked about that. Anyway, then there's the, uh, after the C sharp minor part, it's got that little turnaround. And then Bela and I trade the next part of the song, we trade fours, but he's playing on my previous changes and I'm playing, playing on, on his, his previous changes. The thought was, is that, okay, now he can solo over the progression I was on earlier and vice versa. And uh, we did that. And then when the Charlie Christian part came back, the mm -hmm. same part, we decided to try to do a Dixieland thing where we were both, both soloing at the same time but trying not to step on each other. Um, so we were just, and we're just, that thing, the lines that come out of that are just, you can hear, you know, that's that dominant pentatonic yeah. again, you know, that, that's so real, you really use that uh, almost I, on every dominant chord in this song. It, it, yeah. In this song, probably so, yeah, yeah. you know, because, you know, it's really just like playing a blues on the four chord. Yep. Okay, but then it goes to this.
When that's over, I'm sorry. Then there's a turnaround. The turnaround is this, the Beverly Hillbillies. And then there's a line that goes over that that just goes. They're just triads. Arpeggios. Yeah. Arpeggio, triad, arpeggios. And then it goes. That's going from uh, and that's where you hear the, uh, hopefully you can hear that chordal movement in the line. Right back to, yep. but a different pickup. <laughs> so it had to be an overdub. Yeah, because it's coming out of that. Uh, yeah, right, I, right. I had to do it on another track. But. <laughs> so I guess when you when you play this tune live, you're gonna have to be quick at the switching. <laughs> Either that or not play it live. <laughs> <laughs> but Bela's not here. You know, yeah. we did mess around with it in rehearsal. I just the idea of playing the tune without him is just really hard for me to. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to rearrange it or do something different with it, and that's gonna take some time. I, I want to play it live, but I, I doubt we will right away. Need some time in the shed. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking us through your, your tune, you. Jimmy. Thank you, man. Thank you. This is Jason Shadwick with PremierGuitar.com. <clears throat>